What's going on, my baddies? What's going on, y'all? It is me, your godfather. And as you guys can see from the background, I am stuck in a hotel, you guys. Yes, I am still out of town for work. But you guys have been begging. You guys have been complaining. You guys have been complaining, saying, Oh my gosh, Cole, you behind on episodes. Please catch up. Like, this is not you. And y'all, I'm glad y'all dug into my ass because this is not me. This is not me. I need to get back on top of things, y'all. I've been, I just been forgetting about my channel. Like, I be forgetting it exists sometimes. Like, when I'm out into the world, like, I be forgetting. But y'all, I'm back. And we are here to review episode 11 of Baddest Caribbean, y'all. Y'all, I'm back at it. I'm revitalized. I feel good. Like, and I have my notes. I have my notes, y'all. We got to do this the old-fashioned way because I do not have my phone here. We got to take notes on the iPad. So if y'all are here for the fool of fucking nigga tree, if y'all are here to just get into the laughs and giggles of this episode because it really wasn't much, some of y'all faves in this episode really pissed me off. They did. So if you're new here, how you doing? I am Ko. You'll love your stay here. Be sure to like. Be sure to comment. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Click the bell to be notified of all my latest updates so you don't miss a thing. I mean, it shouldn't take you that long. Just click that button right there. You see it? Go ahead and click it. You did it? Okay, you did it. Let's get into this review. Okay, you guys. So we start this episode off with Slim and Dia. If you guys remember from the last episode, those two were kicked off the island. Those two were evicted. And they're just counting their woes. Like, they're sad. They're upset. They feel the way that they got evicted. And, you know, the human in me, I do understand. I would feel a way too because, especially for Slim, I mean, Slim, you got your ass beat. I mean, you got beat down to the ground. You hit your head on a bar counter. Dear, I feel bad for you because it's your English. That was the reason why you got kicked off. I mean, personality-wise, I mean, you really didn't have one for me. I didn't like you. Like, you didn't fit in with the baddie aesthetic. And I'm not saying you're ugly or anything. You just didn't fit in. Like, I feel like this show wasn't a good fit for you. Slim, you fit in with the baddie aesthetic with the Bosch BBLs and everything like that, but you're just a fake ass person and a do girl. And you got no hands. I mean, you got to go back home. Yeah, go back home, return to Cinder, send her to UPS. She's done. But that's reality TV. Cold bloody. And y'all, truth be told, I thought they were raised hell. Like, y'all know in BGC days, when somebody getting kicked out, they knocking pictures off the wall, breaking table sets, cracking mirrors. I mean, these two packed up their little luggages and left. Quietly. Y'all better than me. I don't even got pots and pans in the bed like boom, boom, all over your damn head. I probably would hit you with a skillet while you were sleeping. Like y'all crazy. So I don't know what's going on with that, but the crazy it is was not letting that go down. All right, y'all. So y'all know the vibes. Y'all know the vibes. It's time to go to the next location, the Dominican Republic. Big Dominican, bitch. Y'all know she hyped up, you know, feeling herself. She's going back to her home country. You can't help but to feel good for Biggie. Like, she's happy. She's in good spirits. Everybody feeling good. You know, the vibe. But this is what we found out about an altercation between Mariah Lynn's mom and Anna. Now, y'all, sidebar. How in the hell? Did Mariah Lynn's mom and Anna Mac even meet, let alone get into a scuffle? Mariah Lynn, mom, aren't you like 50? You're fighting with somebody that's half your age? Your old ass should be at home watching Young and the Restless. Like, why is you out here tussling to the ground with somebody that's half your age, that's half your junior? And don't you have a child that's, that's even younger than Anna Mac? Like, what in the hell is going on here? Anna Mac said Mariah Lynn's mom was giving her the evil glare, like, hmm. I see you. I see you for your works, bitch. I see you. And Anna Mac was like, I'm not going for this. I had to put the paws on her ass. I had to doom her dumb ass. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, I kind of sort of understand because y'all, for me, me personally, I don't see me fighting the older person because I'm going to break your brother ass. I'm going to break you. I don't see me fighting older people because I have respect as well. But if somebody older, you know, runs up on me, I'm inclined to defend myself. Now, I might throw you down to the ground, but if you try to fight me back, I'm going to have to put the paws on your ass as well. Now, Anna Mac, I need you to understand that retaliation is a must because if you put your hands on my mother, I'm coming beat that ass. Like, it's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The crazy 88 can't even do nothing because I'm like a woman scorned. If you lay your hands on my elders, oh, baby, I'm coming get you. But what will possess y'all old asses to be doing these types of shenanigans, Mariah Lynn's mom? Talk to me. Okay, y'all, so we get to the Airbnb in Dominican Republic. And y'all, I must say, this Airbnb, whoever Airbnb, whoever Airbnb account this is, this Airbnb is lavish. 
I mean, this mansion, this is a mansion. Like, y'all, I am so envious. I'm not even going to hold you. I wish I was one of the hoes in this episode. Like, I wish I could be on side Natalie Nunn's chin and just rub it so she could grant my wish. Like, girl, that Airbnb was lavish. It was a luxury. Like, oh my gosh, they did the big one. I got to get tens with tens to do. Like, they are stepping up this season with the Airbnbs, y'all. I must say, when everybody put up to the Airbnb, it was like a homecoming parade. Biggie with our big ass flag. I mean, giving us very much pterodactyl. Like, I was happy for Biggie. So, y'all, we see Anna Mack on her way to Urgent Care. Now, y'all, this is like a running gag. Like, this is the second season in a row. We see Anna Mack going to Urgent Care about, about her finger. Damn, you brittle bone bitch. Like, what is going on with you, girl? Drink your, drink your protein shakes. Shit, drink some milk. Like, how your bones always breaking? And she's on the phone with Natalie and Tzatziki. Now, she's giving them the rundown of what happened. And, y'all, truth be told, I'm inclined to believe Anna Mack because, I mean, look at Mariah Lynn. Shit, I mean, yeah, that far fetched that her mama would do some fuck shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, though, I feel like, I feel like nobody was being real with Anna Mac. I feel like somebody should have told Anna Mac, you should have just ran away from the situation. Like, why would you fight an elderly person? Like, you don't get no cool points from that. But she's on her way to urgent care, y'all. Hopefully she's okay. Now, it's time to get into that next scene. So, y'all, the next scene is between Meatball, Callie, Tinker Bella. And I believe Biggie. Long story short, in this scene, y'all, Tinker Bella felt the way that her friend Slim got eliminated and it didn't tell her nothing. And y'all, I told y'all, the tension is brewing, I believe, between Tinker Bella and Meatball. I feel like, I don't know, I don't know if them two are actually sisters in real life, like DNA type sisters. I'm not too sure. But at the same time, though, it's weird that you did not tell your sister that you wanted her Ace Boom Coom to go home. Like, I don't know if Meatball is giving jealousy. But something not clicking. The energy is definitely starting to show between these two. And Tinker Bella said, next time this happens, it's going to be a problem whether you're OG or not. So I'm like, damn. Like, okay, Tink bossed up on him. And y'all, Meatball did not like that. Girl, ever since Meatball became an OG, and now she's in her home country as well. Oh, this bitch feeling herself. Who the fuck is Tinker Bella? Like, who is Tinker Bella? Girl, you should be happy we didn't evict your ass. I mean, Tinker Bella is, you know... Kind of while watching this show, I mean, she the only bitch that's kind of giving it up. So, I mean, I don't think she going nowhere. So, the next thing we get, y'all, is Natalie with her gang of streetwalkers, a.k.a. Scotty and Jayla. And everybody's in agreement that it's time for Gretchen to go. But the funny thing about this whole scene was, was the fact that Scotty said one thing about Gretchen going home. And Natalie was like, all right, since you feel like Gretchen should go home, I'm going to let you handle this. I'm going to give you this assignment. It's your assignment to get Gretchen out of this house. Now, I felt like Natalie set Scotty up. Not even going to hold you. I feel like Scotty definitely got set up by Natalie. And the fact that Scotty did not even clock it or didn't even try to defend herself, like, girl, Natalie set you up for the fall. She really did. And the only reason why I feel like Scotty went through with it because Jilla had her back. If nobody backed Scotty up, Scotty was not going to do that shit. Scotty would left it up to somebody else. Scotty was not going to fight, y'all. I'm telling y'all, Scotty was not going to fight. She wasn't going to check nobody. She wasn't going to press nobody. Because her ass would have been Diddy a long time ago. And Scotty, keep in mind, if you're trying to go evict Gretchen, Callie is right there. They are a package deal. And Callie is a horrid bitch. I mean, Callie ain't lost a brawl yet. Scotty, I, I, I'm not too sure. Maybe you should go to bed and think about this, my good girl. Go sleep on it. So, y'all, the next scene, we see everybody outside, right? You know, discussing what happened the day before. And we see Mariah Lynn pull up. Now, y'all, when Mariah Lynn pulled up, y'all, they had some Freddy Krueger-ass music playing. And, y'all, Mariah Lynn ain't no killer. She ain't no stepper. She not going to do nothing. So, we just looking at her like, oh, girl, like, are you okay and everything? She's like, I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off. Like, where's Anna? I, I need to talk to Anna. And I'm like... Girl, calm down. Like, your eyes still leaking, girl. Gain your composure. I understand where you're coming from, but, girl, you're not going to fight that girl right now. You're not going to fight that girl, like, regardless. Like, the fact that you stop and talk to them, this proves to me that this is reality TV because what type of bitch will be stopping to talk to the gang of hoes with somebody just fought their mama? Anybody know? Do anybody know? Who in their right mind will stop to talk to people and I'm going to try to check somebody for fighting my mama? Like, girl, what? Uh, goodbye. Now, Tzatziki was right. Tzatziki said, now two wrongs don't make a right. Now, it was wrong for Anna to make the fight. Your mama, she was dead ass wrong for that. But your mama is a provoker. She provoked people, so she provoked the ass whooping. Now, I ain't saying it was right for Anna to put her hands on her. But she had her part to play as well, so she got her ass beat. That's on her. And I'm like, all right, Tzatziki, you ate that. You ate that because, once again, two wrongs don't make a right. Now, in the midst of all that, y'all, Roly decides to get her slim ass up and says, 
Mariah Lynn, I got a bone to pick with you because allegedly, y'all, I don't know if it's true or not, but allegedly Mariah Lynn had been sending text messages saying she's the star of the show, she should be treated better, and y'all, I was confused. Now, Mariah Lynn, I know you love saying you're an international superstar and things of that nature, but I'm just confused on how you feel like you should be treated better. You don't give shit, Mariah Lynn. You don't. You try to give us cute, witty one-liners and a confessional trying to get a sound to go viral. It never works. So I'm confused on how you should be treated better. What is better for you? You want to be close to Natalie Nunn? And then she said, I feel like me and Tatika should be treated better. Y'all, this is what I don't understand. And y'all, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just a real ass person. Why are they keep going up for Tatika when it's time for Tatika to go up for them? She don't do nothing for them. Like, y'all ride for Tatika so hard. But when y'all need Tatika's help, that girl be in the background giving y'all a deer in head like, 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 Tzatziki don't be giving y'all no type of energy, but y'all always going up with Tzatziki, and I'm gonna need y'all to stop that. Stop sucking Tzatziki pussy lips and stand on your own tin. And Mariah Lynn, I want to believe you so bad. I wanted to believe Rolly's crack foot ass was lying on you, but you give me the type of person to throw a rock and hide your hand. You been doing that. And Mariah Lynn never denied that she didn't say that, so it was like, well, Mariah Lynn did jump on your ass again this season for these types of shenanigans. Then you got yourself to blame. Like, damn, you always putting yourself in hot water. Like, you need a storyline that bad. So then after all the foolishness went down, it was time for us to get the scene with Callie and Gretchen. Now, y'all, from the previews, this is where all these shenanigans went down there. So, y'all, let me tell y'all what happened. Gretchen feels like everybody in the house being fake as fuck towards her. And including Callie. Now, I'm looking at Gretchen mighty funny because... Kelly been riding with your ass since day one. When nobody in the house don't even like the air that you breathe, this girl been riding for you. And now all of a sudden you feel like Kelly is being fake. And y'all, this is the kicker. Some people in the house told her to watch Kelly. Mind you, these are the same people that say they want her ass to go home and also been trying to jump on her. So what says that me? You listening to the ops. How? How you put your best friend on the side with the ops and she been the only one riding for you? So, y'all, I was so confused. I was like, huh? How did we get here? Like, how did we get here, bitch? If anybody should be mad, it should be Callie's ass because she been riding with your ignorant ass for the longest. You kept saying the N-word and we kept saying that she was stupid and now you trying to throw her under the bus because you think she's fake. If anything, Callie, that was a slap in your face. That was a slap in your face to us and the black community because you was a solid ass, down ass female and for her to switch up on you like that, Oh, Kelly, yeah, you should have just, yeah, you should have just bulldozed Gretchen ass down to the ground. I'm not even gonna hold you. Gretchen would have had to see me. So, Kelly, you know, being a solid ass, real ass person with a brain was like, you're not gonna sit here and test my gangster. I know you're not going against me. I know you're not going against me. I know you're not checking me. So, she was telling her to tone it down. I mean, y'all, Kelly was getting aggressive with the girl. And I'm like, woo, Like, it was giving sexual attention as well. Y'all know I love seeing two horror bitches arguing back and forth, y'all, it made me feel frisky, so she was telling her, tone it down, y'all, they started pushing and shoving, and I'm like, girl, like, are we gonna see the Golden Girls break up, like, is it happening, are we gonna see the Golden Duo break up, and Gretchen was like, I ain't gotta apologize to you for saying the N-word, and I'm like, oh, you don't, y'all hear that, she don't have to apologize to us, your partner in crime is black, and you saying the N-word, and you ain't gotta apologize to her, bitch, what? And Kelly was like, now I'm taking it personal, so you do got to apologize, bitch. Now you do. You do. And I was like, Kelly, are you finally seeing the light? Like, are you finally going to wake up? Are you going to wake up and just disassociate yourself with her? Because Gretchen is not good news. She's not good news. I couldn't be friends with Gretchen. I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't. I feel like their friendship was genuine. I feel like it was real. Like, if only Gretchen wasn't an ignorant-ass, racist-ass person, I would be down for this friendship. Like, I love seeing two just stick together through thick and thin. But she's just ignorant. Like, and I just can't get down with it. It actually came to blows, y'all. I was gagged. When I seen Callie hit her, I was gagged, y'all. I was gagged down boots. And I just, I can't wait for the next episode, y'all. I can't wait to get into the next episode. Like, girl, Kelly actually laid hands on Gretchen. And I must stand. I must stand. Hopefully, that's the wake-up call that Kelly needs. You know what I'm saying? Or if they're able to work it out and Gretchen stops saying the N-word, maybe I could potentially come around to this duo. You never know. But, y'all, this episode was quite lackluster. Kelly and Gretchen ate at the last bit of the episode. And that's about it. I felt like those two were going to fight eventually. I felt like it was only so much Callie can take from Gretchen. So much of her saying the N-word that it was bound to happen. But y'all, the episode was like, like I said. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. 
Be sure to like the video, be sure to comment, and be sure to subscribe. Like, I know you're not watching my review and have not subscribed to the channel yet. Like, what are you doing? Like, if you're just watching me from the bushes and not subscribing, then you're weird and I cannot have you here. But you guys, that's all for this review. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ooh, dee water water. Ooh, dee bang bang. Ooh, dee water water. Ooh, dee bang bang. Ooh, dee water 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 water.